Hello everyone, welcome back to Blockman Editor Tutorial. In these videos, we will give you a complete introduction to the Blockman Editor. As the one and only official currency supported in our editor, Gcube, can be used to purchase items in game or cash out. Here we take a game as an example. Let's take a look at the use of Gcubes in game. When you open the store in game, you should find that items in the store can be purchased with the G-Cube. Then open the skin store, you can see that skins in this game can also be purchased with G-Cubes. So how do developers get G-Cubes? This is where we introduce you G-Cube shop in the editor. Launch the editor, click the game settings button, and you can find it. G Cube Shop tab. You can configure some items for sale through the Coop Shop. If players spend G Cubes for these items, you can get a certain percentage of the G Cube income. Let's take a look at how to configure the items in the G Cube Shop now. The item configuration can be done in the item category. We must create an item category first, or you can't create any item. Click on the new button below the item category to create two categories. To help better distinguish the categories better, we need to rename them. There are two ways to rename the item category. One is to double click the category to modify. For example, let's change the name here to item. The other is to select the rename option after right click on the category. For instance, we can change the name here to equipment. Apart from the new button below the item list, there are also a few function buttons. Let's go through them. The duplicate button can copy all the settings of a well-set category. If there are items already configured in the selected category, all its configurations are copied along with the item category. The two buttons with the arrow to the right of the duplicate button help adjust the sequence of categories in the item category list. The button with the arrow pointing up can move a category upwards and the one with the arrow pointing down can move a category downwards. The delete button is used to clear an unwanted category. After the item categories are created, we can add items in the categories. Select an item category, click on the new button on the right side of the item list, add two items. The buttons and their functions in the item list, and the item category are the same, thus we will just skip here. Next. We determine the detailed properties of an item in the item list. Click the item select button then a select window will pop up. We can choose a created item from the window as the item, or click the new button to create a new one. Here we choose an item that has already been created. Regarding the property name, the name set in the input box. Is the name that will be eventually displayed in store? Instead of the item name from the item option, if we do not modify this property, in the game store, the default name will be displayed as item. The property price refers to the number of currencies needed to purchase this item. Count refers to the number of items available in a single purchase. Let's set the number of count to 2. This means that player can get 2 of this item in a single purchase. Type limit and purchase limit restrictions are used together. Purchase limit will take effect only when the type limit is set to member limited purchase. For example, we set the item fireball to member limited purchase and set purchase limit to 1. This means that a player can only purchase a fireball for once. Description property is mainly used to introduce the item. The description will be displayed in store. You can check this out yourself. Under normal circumstances, the default currency of the item is G-Cube. But if the creator designs other currencies in-game, such as diamonds, then the merchandise currency can also use custom ones. Let's take a look at how to customize the currency. First we have to create an item as a currency. Click on item in the game component, let's create a diamond item, and determine item model and item icon. The item type is set to handheld in check, as currency property. We've completed the creation of a custom currency item. Now we can see the diamond currency, G 
just created from the item's currency properties. Note, the user-defined currency is only an item in the game. It does not support cash out. Next, let's improve the configuration of the items in the store, and enter the running mode. Before you enter running mode, you must check the Show the Store button on the game interface, in the interface settings. If this property is not checked, there will be no store button in game. That's all for this video. We hope it can help you on your way to a great creator. If you want to know more about the editor, you can comment below the video or post on the official forum. See you in the next video.